All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to show you how to solve an integral equation, which is hopefully integral to your calculus experience. Namely, let's try to find a function such that the integral of f times the integral of 1 over f equals minus 1. Disclaimer, what I mean here is, let's try to find a function f such that there is one antiderivative of f times another antiderivative of 1 over f, which gives you minus 1. Otherwise, this question is ill-posed because you can just add constants to antiderivatives to make this not work. All right, that said, how do we solve this? Here's the trick. Let's try to convert an integral equation into a differential equation. So first, let's try to solve for the hard part, integral of 1 over f to get integral of 1 over f equals minus 1 over integral of f. And now let's differentiate both sides. On the one hand, we get the derivative of integral of 1 over f, which is just the function itself, 1 over f. On the other hand, we get the derivative of this whole junk, but Remember, integrals are functions themselves, so they deserve the Chen Lu as well. So using the Chen Lu, we get 1 over the integral of f squared times the derivative of the integral, which is just f. And now the nice thing is we can cross multiply and get a particularly nice identity. Because if you cross multiply, you simply get integral of f squared equals to f squared, which simply means one of two things. Either the integral of f is f, or the integral of f is minus f. So again, that's nice, and that's because we chose minus 1 at the beginning. With 1, it would have been a bit harder. All right, and now simply differentiate both sides of each identity. And what we get is f equals f prime or f equals minus f prime, which then gives you f prime equals f or f prime equals minus f. And those are equations that hopefully we're all familiar with, but if the function is a derivative, it means that the function is exponential. So c e to the x, or for the other case, f of x is c e to the minus x. Ta-da! And we found two solutions. I, I'm not sure if there are other ones, but still, this is nice. However, when I first saw this, I was super skeptical. Because I was like, really? Is it really e to the x that solves it? Turns out, yes. And in fact, let's show this. So what we want to show is, let's say for c equals 1, the integral of e to the x times the integral of 1 over e to the x, so e to the minus x, is that 1? Again, for general, antiderivatives is not true, but remember what I said. What this means is, is there one antiderivative of e to the x times another antiderivative of e to the minus x, which gives you minus 1? And indeed there is, because if you choose the antiderivative, simply e to the x, and the other one minus e to the minus x, then those things cancel out and you end up getting minus 1. And you can check the same thing from e to the minus x. It's just this reversed, which is quite cute. And last but not least, so integral equations, they are extremely important. Uh, for, in for instance, in predator-prey models where evil uh, wolves chase scared bunnies or something, something called the lotka volterra equations, which are very useful. That's for another time if you want. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.